Hey everybody, welcome to Brick Vault. Today is another LEGO Top 10 Mocks of the Week episode where I show you guys the coolest custom creations that I happen to see people building in LEGO throughout this last week. And like always, there are a ton more than just 10 creations. Everything is linked in the description below and I highly, highly, highly recommend that you check out those links to see more interesting and fun creative builds that these designers are putting together on a daily basis. And before I jump into the first build of the week, I do want to say there was a custom build that went up in the web store this week for us and it is a classic design coming from the designer Norton 74 this is the coffee stand or also known as Andy's Cafe you can see the classic Americana styles uh, heavily heavily influence the architecture and just the general vibe of the people and Norton 74 has an excellent way of building out a larger and more complete atmosphere when he tackles a scene this can be modified to fit on a 32 by 32 base plate as well if you wanted to integrate this into lego creator modular sets or a custom modular city and any and all support from you guys is always greatly appreciated by us and the designers that we work with like norton all right let's move on to the first build of the week from carter witz this is called mountain cabin the idea is simple but the build is definitely not the birch trees look excellent i can see some influences from perhaps one of the later creator modular sets though there's actually a lot of of, uh, differences here. The spines are a little bit more spindly. The use of those robotic arms is great. There's some horn pieces thrown in as well. And then you can see the very crudely constructed cabin. And I mean, it was built well to look like it is a crude cabin. The tiles that make up the wood boards are all a little bit offset. There's different little bricks kind of sticking out in random places to make it look like this isn't maybe the most well constructed thing, but definitely serves a purpose out here in the wild. The hunter is returning home. And probably my favorite uh, little aspect of this build is the build for the water. I see different techniques all the time. This light blue looks so good with the trans clear over. It really gives you the idea that this is very fresh, perhaps the newly melted snow or something like that. And it's just a nice little refreshing nature build. Now here is another nature build as well from Revan New. This is called Over the Garden Wall. This was part of a build challenge where he had to create three characters. And my initial impression when looking here, I thought it was kind of like a Hansel and Gretel theme or something like that, but really, no, not, not quite. The vintage kind of overlay that we have as a color scheme, I think even also a filter on the photo itself gives you a really uh, almost ominous atmosphere. It, this feels a little bit creepy. That vacant stare from the taller child really kind of, I don't know, weirds me out a little bit. But everything else around here feels pretty nice and calm and relaxing and cheerful. The uh, smaller, more portly boy looks really, really happy and excited. He's pointing to something in the distance. And the bird is just sort of an innocent and free-going companion that follows from above. We've got some excellent build details though for like just about anywhere you look. I love the build for the wings on the bird. It's such an interesting choice not to give the taller boy any arms. It looks like they may be tucked underneath his coat, at least I'm hoping so. And the upside down tea kettle on the boy's head. Not only is built well, but it's just a fun and interesting just strange choice to make. Now number eight moving down the list comes from the builder John W and it's called Dark 30. Or at least that's what the letter acronyms I'm pretty sure spell out to. Now you'll notice there is one piece here that is not official Lego. That's the, the, the gun that this minifigure is holding but I don't think it makes or breaks this build necessarily. I just thought the actual style of connecting the legs to the top torso of the minifigure was such an excellent little design choice and this bodysuit armor just has a feeling of looking very aggressive and also incredibly spry. The detailing on top of the helmet uh, and having the helmet kind of push through the open visor area is so cool. It makes for just fun, interesting choices. It's such a small and simple build, except actually not that simple. Definitely, definitely a cool design choice from John W. It'd be cool to see a squad of these guys infiltrating a larger sci-fi diorama. And then I swear, I, you, I almost never get choked up in action movies or movies in general, but the end of T2 was definitely one of those moments for me. And W. Navare, the builder, has put this together. It's called T2 Terminator Gives the Thumbs Up. So if you're at all familiar with this movie or this scene, you'll see that he did such a good job 
I like that he intentionally showed off the underside of the studs for the glove itself. It just kind of looks a little bit raw and rugged. And by the time we got to this point in the movie and the close up on the hand, it's just all torn apart. The different levels and layers of lava look fun. And the hanging chains from the top just add just a little bit of extra atmosphere to this overall little build. This certainly hit me with nostalgia points for sure. And it's double excellent that the build itself is actually quite fun. Now here is just one fun design that I found in a small diorama from Trevor Frost. It's called Imperial Compound on Kashyyyk, and it's so simple. The interior light design is nice, and everything just kind of looks pretty straightforward, but the concept of the Jedi pushing the Stormtrooper straight into the wall with the detached legs and arms, that is just awesome. It's comical, it looks great, and also, who is this Jedi? Because I honestly haven't seen anybody uh, with this type of force power, at least not use it like this before. That is the simple only reason why I wanted to put this into the top 10. It's just such a funny image. And it's also built quite well. Relatively simple all around in terms of technique, but you don't have to have the most complicated techniques in order to create something that just looks so good. Now jumping to the next one, I feel like Timothy Kachev has just been on a roll of amazing creativity. This is a designer that we feature all the time and for good reason. There's just so many awesome things that come from this guy's head. We've got hyenas and there's a little winky face there in the title. And of course, these are the three bad guy hyenas from the uh, Lion King movie. I didn't even have to look back at reference pictures. I haven't seen that movie in 15 years or something, but the characters from the film are so iconic and their brick built counterparts are captured so incredibly well. I love the expressions on each of their faces. The builds for their body are kind of lanky. Their heads slink really low. They're standing around a nasty bubbly pond with those nice trans clear domes and bubble pieces to pop up in the front. Gosh, the atmosphere is just captured like, just like no other. The faces are just so much fun. It's rare that you get such character out of Lego built faces, and it's even more rare that you get recognizable character faces built out of Lego on top of that. And then this next one is just so simple and stark and disturbing. This is an art piece. Sometimes when I see somebody uh, becoming very, very serious with Lego as an art medium, I can see or hear people smirking or at least not taking uh, this type of building as uh, something that you can take as seriously, let's say, as a medium of painting or drawing. But there's just something so specific and so disturbing about this simple build here. It's called Untitled, or it's simply Untitled, and it's by the builder. Why not? The forced perspective here is incredibly strong. The wall that we have along the ocean is very slowly but surely being bent. That you can see at the bottom with a lot of those uh, one by two plates. And then the sloped cheese wedge pieces give you the idea that the wall is just getting thinner and moving away when in fact it's actually just getting shorter. This gives you the idea that we're looking at a giant walled city with buildings that don't even really line up together. It kind of gives you the idea that the, the, the city is bland and chaotic. And in the midst of it all, there is a man falling into the ocean by the bridge. Everything though is seen from the inside of a tunnel or an archway. The whole piece is very long and tall, vertical. I know is a sin for uh, video cameras and, and cell phone cameras, but the intention of making the piece look like this really works. Actually, really, really works. This is one of those buildings that I'm very, very surprised that I haven't seen until now. And I personally am just having a great time uh, going through their previous Flickr feed myself. This is definitely a builder worth checking out if you've got spare time. And now let's knock out a couple of fan favorites. Speeders and spaceships are just, I love building them. Everybody that I know really loves building them. And Nick Trotta has knocked out a doozy. This is fire break and just look at all those different combinations of slopes that line up. The cockpit has these weird angles. I especially love how the little bit of that red wall kind of wraps around that black windscreen piece. The angle of the pontoons and or wings that show out. There's just so many different angles that match up. There's one, two, three, four, five. I don't know. There's just a bunch of angles that all happen to marry together in a way that feels quite strong. It feels very aggressive. The angles all work and there's a lot of fun details. The intakes have that wonderful white lining on the inside. He's chromified a few pieces here and there. Special custom chrome pieces it looks like. And this is a design 
design that frankly makes me shudder to think how long it must have taken to get all of these pieces to match up the way that they do. It looks amazing. I think the effort was very much well worth it. And now we're looking at a build from Arrow Okonen. It is called Eurasian Pygmy Owl. And if that isn't the most adorable Lego build you've seen this week, then show me what you've seen this week, because that is the most adorable Lego build I've seen this week, or is commonly referred to in the Southern California vernacular, Totes Adorbs. Yes, I've heard adults say that here unironically. But for real though, the uh, studded technique for the entire fluffy plumage of the owl works well. The fact that there's studs facing out on all sides. The spherical head has uh, studs that are offset diagonally on either side to allow room for those uh, those big old eyes to fit in as well. That's a really fun technique, and it certainly allows for the full body of the eyes and the color behind them to sink into the head very seamlessly. Super fun little build. And then there is simply nothing cute about this next one. It's from Sunder59 called Air Carrier, and I couldn't tell you how long it must have taken this guy to design out this absolutely massive ship. What is it about aircraft carriers and flying that everybody seems to love so much? I mean, technically these propellers don't necessarily have to be flying propellers. This could just be the full hull of uh, a ship that is uh, completely underwater, but the twin runway fantasy aspect of this just feels so cool. The entire white detailing of the lines along the top are all brick built in with tiles and other plates, and there's just something so much fun about the rounded smooth areas of extra decks below and turrets on the sides. I do believe that this is a 100% digital build. Don't quote me on that. It is kind of hard to tell based on the color wash that we have for a lot of these photos, but either way, it doesn't bother me at all. It is just such a fun, massive air carrier. And I shudder to think how long uh, it must have taken to design something so huge and so immaculately well put together. Granted, if it's digital, you don't have to stress test it the same way you would if it wasn't, but this feels like a reasonable build that could probably exist in real life if you really wanted to put all the time, effort, and money into getting all the bricks and snapping them together. So anyways, guys, that is going to be it for the top 10 mocks of the week. Remember to check out the description below. There are a ton, a ton, a ton of links to builders from all over the world. I highly recommend if you've got extra time that you check them out. If you enjoy our content, you can always like or subscribe. Tune in same time next week for another Top 10 Mocks of the Week episode. And uh, thanks a lot for watching, everyone. We'll see you next time at Brick Vault. Yeah.